Welcome to our first podcast, 10K Hours. I'm Michael Pecchia and Justin Gobi Fields. Hello. Hey, uh, this is kind of an important podcast. A lot of things are going on. We've just been notified that we have, it's not a lockdown. What did you call it, Justin? Shelter in place. Shelter in place. And I didn't call it that. That was Clifton. Clifton, COVID-19 is out there. Yeah. We're running with our first podcast tonight, March 19th, 2020. It is 8.25 p.m. We're rolling. Uh, we're excited. We're going to focus on being positive. It's a good time for us to focus on something else beside what is going on outside. We are here to encourage artists to do their art. During these times, um, amazing art comes from it, whether it's music, yeah. images, paintings, um, poems, stories. We decided to push through with this tonight and start tonight as a way for an outlet for artists out there to write in, check us out on Facebook, 10K Hours Podcast, um, join us. If after today, we'll take your questions, we'll answer them. It is a different time right now it's something we're not familiar with none of us have experienced this so we felt it was really great to come on have our first guest we'll interview justin goby fields a little backstory on him um he's a concept artist for hollywood's films um his story is very intriguing Put a lot of time in. He's put his 10,000 hours in, you could say. Well. What do you think? Maybe maybe halfway, I think. Halfway? Yeah. We'll say maybe. halfway. We'll see. <clears throat> I don't know. Halfway, don't know. I'm becoming a master. <laughs> yeah. See, now I'm just like, no, no, I don't feel like a master. But yeah. We're always learning, yeah. right? We, we never, never stop stopped. learning. The yeah. most important thing is to realize <clears throat> Every day is an opportunity to learn. Yeah, and you know, I'm I'm even seeing a lot of really good things in the community right now, like people setting up uh, Discord channels to hang out and you know, video chat with people. Uh, I think that there's a, a really uh, nice like big club uh, thing that happens here in LA called Cloak and Dagger, and that DJ and his crew has been very very nice to live stream events and stuff like that in in LA and uh it's pretty cool it's pretty rad i like it's it's neat seeing people come together on the internet and use the internet as a resource i'm i'm very interested to see like the usage statistics of what's going on now that everybody's kind of like stuck at home right now but I don't want to dwell on that too much. I want to no, just let's give a little backstory on yeah. 10K Hours and what our thought behind hosting this podcast will do for creatives outside. Justin, do you want to jump in and yeah, give I a mean, little background? You know, honestly, the whole concept of the 10,000 Hours group was formed out of my buddy Danny Williams. Uh, he, he had a Facebook group called Lunch Crunch. And at the time, like work for him was 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 you know getting very busy, couldn't really continue to moderate the group, um, and you know uh, I'm sure there was, at the time there was a lot of people that were asking like, hey, can I take it over or anything like that, and uh, you know instead of like separating that or, or handing off the moderation, I think he just shut down the group and was just like, hey, by the way. Justin's running this thing called 10,000 Hours. If you're looking for a new home, go there. And that was really, you know, the birth the birth of that thing. You know, I, I think I kept checking, I don't know, like every five minutes, like every five minutes, like a thousand people were going into it. And I was like, oh my gosh, okay. So, you know, it, it kind of formed out of the need that there wasn't enough like places that were actually giving critiquing and feedback and that's the whole point of you know the 10,000 hours group on Facebook is you know there's industry professionals in there you can ask questions without fear um, you know and, and right now we're you know I'll be honest we, we need more moderators 
It's just it needs more moderation. But uh, I think that the the spirit is still pretty much alive in that group, and it's only going to get better now with time that we have we have time set up, set aside for this now. And um, yeah, you know, I just think you know there's a place to learn and it's a place to kind of level up and do different things. And you know, there's what I really like is that in the beginning it was just purely 2D art, mm -hmm. and then it became you know ZBrush and sculpture and 3D modeling, and now there's even animation going on in there, and I, it's it's great. It's great to see. And, and adding with the podcast. It's our opportunity to reach out to our friends, to industry professionals, to share their stories of the work they did to get to where they are, to inspire up and coming artists, to show them that, you know, it isn't just easy. When you see some of these great writers, directors, artists, concept artists, CG artists, cameramen, it didn't happen overnight. No. No. And, and that's what we're here is to share their stories. We're going to kick it off with Justin um, and show that through your life, you have to overcome obstacles in your life. But if it's a passion, yeah, it's not that difficult because it's something you love and you tackle it. And let's just jump in. Justin, just tell us where you're from where were you born yeah. how you you know discovered your art yeah i mean okay so th th there's something to what you were saying before you know about like it, it, there's something to that old saying where it's like if you're doing what you love it's it's not work right mm -hmm. so you know that's one of those things where i feel like you know, you got to follow your passions and and see where that is and that's another thing that like you know even gary v you know, online, he constantly says that if you're not doing what you love, then why are you doing it kind of a thing? You know, is money that important? Yeah, it is. But at the same time, it's like happiness is worth more. So, I mean, I, I really get that and I, I adhere to that a little bit. Um, so I grew up, uh, I grew up in Springfield, Illinois. Um, I went to school in Rochester, which is like a little mm -hmm. smaller school um, uh, off the side to Springfield in Illinois and uh, you know grew up in the country we lived on a farm for a little bit um, what else is there yeah I mean it was well, it was it was kind of you know my my mom was an artist at the time and, and or, uh, she had a passion to do it she ended up working in a state job mm -hmm. and stuff like that but do you think you inherited it from your mom the, the 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 art the artist gene I'll call it I mean, if that's a thing, then yeah, most likely I probably did. I mean, when when you were in school, did you doodle on your books? Oh, constantly. Did you? Yeah, constantly. You were constantly drawing on napkins, your book covers, oh, desks. Yeah. Me, my neighbor, my neighbor uh, Frank Sweska and I would draw all the time, all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah. Now, um, jumping into you graduate high school, you're. Do you automatically go to school for art? No. No, no, what what did you what um, did you, you do? Know, like I remember in you know at the at the time I don't know if things have changed, but when I went there I you know I was really hoping to somehow get like an art scholarship or something, you know um, I was really loving it you know and uh, you know I I my art teacher Mr Shaw opened up a lot of doors, mm -hmm. I learned a lot you know um, yeah, I was he always wanted me to not do comic book characters and you know it's at every opportunity it was me trying to do comic book characters but well let me ask you did anybody believe in you that you could actually make a living drawing no no i no. i mean that that reminds me not, my... not till my late 20s did i have friends that worked in the industry literally telling me like you, you know if you want to work in the video game industry or the film industry, it's not you can you can do it it's hard but what do you, but you do? do it? And yeah. could you do it in Illinois? No, no. So you're 21. What are you doing at this time? Um, I, I you're not working for 21. Yeah, I don't remember a lot of 21. I'm just gonna, um, you know, uh, there's not much to do in the Midwest besides, you know, go to the bars when you're 21. Um, I think, you know, I was in and out. I think I went to school, like local community colleges. Like mm -hmm. I would start, 
and then not finish, start, and then not finish. And then I, I just pretty much stopped trying to go to school, you know? Like, it, I think it had something to do with me just not not finding my passion. You know, it yeah, it was like, the, I, I just, I didn't believe in, like, oh, I, I you know, I know that there's the basic education of, like, oh, you got to go learn, you know, Western civilization, you, you know, do all these other classrooms, stuff like that. But I didn't have, there was no classes past, you know, like Art 101 and Art, you know, 202. At the community college. At the community yeah. college, that was it. That was all I had in front of me. So, so, so let's just paint that picture for everyone out there. Yeah. You're 20-something. Yeah. Your passion kind of died. Yeah, it did. Right? Did. You weren't inspired. There isn't any place you can go, and there's probably no guidance to, to, to lead you and go, hey, Justin, these are the steps you need to follow to... Um, get a job doing what your passion is like the i mean we had the i mean it wasn't like you know the archaic times we had the internet but the the resource sharing and the knowledge sharing just wasn't wasn't a thing you know what i mean like and that that brings me to another point where you know i'll I'll have discussions with people online where i'll see you know like they're old pros at doing you know, clay sculpture or something, something within the industry that, you know, takes a lot of talent to do. And I'll see them say something about a young artist putting out a tutorial and they'll be like, well, what makes, what makes that person think that they can put out a tutorial? And it's like, well, one, who are you to say who can do whatever you want on the internet? But anyways, the amount of information that's available is astounding right now. Like you could get an entirely higher form of education online right now, I, I, or just I'm, do it yourself. Yeah, and I'm envious. I mean, it's, I, it's I definitely a different time for sure. Yeah, I mean, the, the internet at your fingertips. I had Encyclopedia Britannica, and they <laughs> seemed so outdated when I was a kid. Um, I, I see the children like, like now. you're waiting on volume M, and yeah, and, <laughs> I, yeah I mean, and there wasn't any resources to go investigate this, and it wasn't nurtured to go and explore, go to the library, get art books, you had to discover it. I mean, it reminds me, my grandfather got a scholarship to RISD, Rhode Island School of Design, and his father was like, you can't make a living with a pencil, get to the factory. <laughs> and he I've was heard a, something like that before. Yeah. yeah, and he was a factory worker. So here you yeah. are, your mid-20s, you go through your 20s, um, I literally didn't pick up a pencil or a pen to do and do anything creative for at least like eight years. So what what are you doing during that time then for eight years? I'm literally just like working job to job, you know, um, just trying to make ends ends meet. You know, it's it's a part of time in your life where it's it's almost character building where you, you know you're you're working three jobs, you're trying to juggle three different people making your work schedule you know what i mean you're up till all hours of the night um you know I, I think at one point i was pretty much addicted to you know playing world of warcraft and like that's i would literally plan my day around or my work schedule around getting to do that because that was the only thing that was i was having fun with yeah you know? and, and that video games are great yeah but but once again that that was your simple pleasure Right, that was your immediate pleasure. Yeah. Three or three jobs, you could get home, turn on the video game, and start playing. Yeah. So, how did you keep that passion alive? Or inside, you had to put that passion somewhere and protect it. Right. It, it, you didn't let it die. Right. It was. It in felt there. like I did. I'll be honest with you. It, it, it felt like, and I'm. You know, I, I remember when I made the decision to try one more time. But, was, but just, it was out of desperation because I. I was unhappy. I was, you know, I was in a great relationship at the time, but I wasn't pulling my weight. Yeah. And and that doesn't feel good. And there would be arguments and the arguments would only happen about that. So yeah. and, and, and it's it's hard cuz you can't, you know, and I I know several other people that, you know, in that point in their lives they're going through that right now, you know what I mean? And the only thing you could say is like you just have to you have to be selfish a little bit. Yeah. 
and do what you love. And then and and anyone that still wants to be a part of your life that's still doing their same level of happiness, like that's who you got to well, look for. And, and they'll support you. Yeah. So circling. And you, you'll you support them. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so to get you where you are today, it never did die. You put it somewhere inside. Yeah. And you protected it. And you somehow nurtured it and put it in place. And now you're 31 years old and you're like, I need to tend this. I need to make it grow. Yeah. How, what sparked that? What put you to over the edge to turn around and nurture that seed you planted or protected inside of you? Yeah, I mean, I, I've I've talked about this before, and it's kind of a thing where you know I feel like a little bit of a broken record, but at the same time, you know, it's it's very true to what happened. You know, I I remember I, at the time I was living in Edwardsville, Illinois, and um, I think I was venting to a friend and was just like, I I just I you know I hate doing this pizza delivery. Like I feel like that's the only thing that I can do. I don't have any formal training. There's no school around that that I want to go to that would teach anything remotely like what I want to do. And, you know, it, he gave me some of the best advice that I will always say. And, you know, now, I mean, at the point, you know, he was an animator at, at uh, Midway Games at the time, and now he's working at Weta, kicking ass. And, you know, he... He said to me one time, and I'll never forget it, and he goes, there comes a time when you stop playing games and you start making them, right? And it was around that time of a birthday, and a lot of my friends got together, and they, you know, I, I got a, you know, The Skillful Huntsman, which is an amazing book by Design Studio Press and Scott Robertson. If, if you don't have it already, you should own it. Um, I got a Noman DVD for, like, how to draw, like, robots or something like that. And then, what else was there? Oh, the big one, which was a Wacom tablet. You know, I, I you know, I, and that, I remember plugging that in and having that disconnect of drawing, you know, you're looking down and drawing, but you're you're looking up at the screen and being like, this, this is strange, yet this is amazing. Yeah, it definitely takes a little bit to get used to yeah. using the Wacom, especially that way. So, so now you have three things that nurture you. Yeah. The Skillful Huntsman. Yeah. The Wacom. And the Advice. Yeah. Um, so with all those, you must have been drawing nonstop. Oh, um, when I first plugged it in, I didn't go to sleep till like 4 a.m. I think I still have that like sketching that I was doing in Photoshop. And, you know, also at this time, you know, on the side, I was getting, I like, I got Photoshop certified. I was trying to do graphic design. Okay. But right at that time as well, the market dropped out. What so, year was that? Um, I want to say, man, what year was that? Had to be like 2010, 2000. Yeah, 2009, 2010, right? Um, a bunch of programs came out, and it was very easy to develop web pages. I mean, that's what I wanted to do at that time was be a graphic designer for web pages. And I learned, you know, I went, I went and got CS2 certified in Photoshop and did Dreamweaver and figured all that. I could do touch-up stuff, but the the market for that just really fell it fell out like you know it, it went from you can make 10 to 20,000 dollars designing a website to no one's going to pay you above 300 dollars yeah I, I i do remember that i was looking for people to make my website yeah you're just like oh my god what's my what am i going to do so um you're 31 yeah it's 2010 yeah something like that yeah it's 2010 you're drawing you're mm -hmm. you're fueling it yeah what um, what's the next step that you took at, at that moment that you're you realize I can't do the web page it's bottomed out I love the drawing you're working at home what, what's interesting you just pointed out was five to ten years earlier you were using that time to play video games and now you're going home instead of jumping on a video game you're drawing yeah and I can't emphasize that enough that if it's your passion you're drawing on a napkin, on mm -hmm. a notepad, 
in Photoshop with a Wacom, you're just doing, you're fueling that passion, but you're creating this vibration that you're like, I got to get out of here. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it really hit on like, it was just like, well, at that time, and it's still pretty much true. You know, if you want to work in film, you're not going to work in film in Ohio, mm-hmm. you know? I'm sorry, but that's the cold, hard truth. One out of like a thousand people that are going to try are going to be able to get into that, right? Or you you come to where the work is, and that's what you had to do, you know? So, you know, right about that that, that time, you know, I was learning as much as I could online. Um, I, you know, I was looking at conceptart.org, you know, at that time. That was when Massive Black was, was around and uh, doing that kind of stuff and, you know, it was almost like a, a weird subculture where like people were trading tutorials on like how to paint and it was just like, Hey, you didn't get this from me. You know what I mean? Like, and you're just like, what, what, what's going on? And, um, you know, that, I think that was like around the time, like LimeWire and the sharing of, of goods illegally was, yeah, was, was happening. Say, yeah. Lime but, wire. Yeah. You know, <laughs> a lot um, of stuff was shared on that online wire. Yeah. And cause what was it? Kazan? I don't remember. I had a lot of MR, MIRC chat stuff going on, but you know, I was starting to realize the power of, you know, of what was out there. You could start to see like these things. And then I started asking my friends that were in the industry, um, you know, like, if you had a chance, where would you go to school? Like, what if I want a direct line to the industry? When, how do I get there? Right. So you started asking the right questions. Yeah, I started understanding that. I think I, I also went to, I, th- I think I was in Edwardsville, and I went to a, a, a college down there that now I know was a for-profit college. Right. It was a very at the time where it was like you know, if you want to make video games, you know, come here and learn. And the moment I started taking that class, I was talking to my friends that were in the industry and they're like, what program are they having you learn? And you're like, they're having us learn Lightwave and like red flag number one. Like all my friends were like, no, no, that's not what we use. Don't use that. Don't listen to that. And then that prompted me to ask the teacher, like, what are your credentials? Yeah. And he was like, mine? Oh, I work at GameStop. And I graduated from this program last year. And you're like, okay, this is not going to work. I have to leave the comfort zone. You got to leave the comfort zone. And and if you can't emphasize that enough, that um, if you're comfortable and you stay in your comfort zone, nothing is really going to happen. You have to knock those walls down. You have to step out, feel uncomfortable, put on a new pair of shoes and walk the talk. Yeah. And, and really break their shoes in, knock those walls down and move forward. Yeah. So what got you? So, so what made you pick uh, California? Well, I mean, well, I, it wasn't really a, a me picking California. It was more like due to the overwhelming advice that I was, you know, getting from, you know, people that are working in the industry. They were just like, hands down, you go to Noma. Mm hmm. You know, and I was already like collecting their DVDs like they were crack cocaine. You know what I'm saying? Like it was, I couldn't get enough of them. I would, like, I didn't even have half the programs or understand them, but I loved watching them. I was well, like, ooh, this is, this is behind, you know, this is a peek into Pandora's box of how movies get made. And, you know, so, my, my, my uh, love for, you know, Stan Winston and, and the, you know, the classics and, you know, Jurassic Park and, all that stuff was like coming back to me where I was like, you know, my first job, you know, when I was like 16 or 17 was in a movie theater. So I've, I've, I've been, love in, the movies. I've been in love with the movies for I, me, me too. ever. I, I mean, the, the movies are fantastic. It's the place to uh, fall down and forget and be taken someplace special. Uh, it's amazing. It's my, uh, it's my chocolate factory. Yeah. As so, cheesy as that sounds. Looking at Noman, the DVDs they put out in, um, was it early 2000 to 2010 were cutting edge they were um, they and and they still are yeah i, I mean na- yeah. now a lot of stuff's online there's a lot of online courses yeah. but they were one of the first alex uh you and i both know him he started noman um extremely talented artist himself mm-hmm. uh f- what i remember is my artist um started this school 
that took industry professionals and had them teach the classes. He wanted somebody who was actually walking w- walking the walk and actually and teaching talking the talk, yeah. and talking the talk <laughs> and teaching That's a good way to put it and teaching what they learned on the job yeah. to up and coming artists. It had never been done. And just to wrap it up for everybody, uh, at a traditional college, in order to teach there, you have to have a degree, um, you need your credentials, and then you're certified to be able to teach. Alex idea through Noman was, well, I need the best, and... I'm going to learn from an industry professional. I'm going to learn from the industry professional. And just so everybody knows, when I started, there really weren't that many schools. So, there was there wasn't th- yeah. and there were no classes that got you a degree in design or I shouldn't say in character design or CG or VFX. Yeah. It was you got hired at a job and this is what I did. I got hired at a job and they said uh, we have Flame, we have 3D Studio Max. Uh, you can learn anything you want to learn, but we're not paying for it, but we're a full production house and I was like well, what do I do? Do I take some off class that may teach me the basics? Or do I sit at night after I'm an assistant editor during the day and learn the software? So I looked around and said, wow, that's a flame. Oh, they got paid good money. (laughs) And and that was my motivation. It was, the 3D Studio Max was so complex to me that I was completely overwhelmed by how submenu, 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 and I loved images and flame made sense to me. So I stayed there and learned. So, yeah. so that was early, late 90s, mid 90s, late 90s. So here we have Alex that takes Noman, um, realizes there really isn't any school that specializes in visual effects at the time. Mm-hmm. And he wants the best of the best to teach his students that, he, that the school he opened. So a lot of them don't have a degree. They learned on the job, and they were traditional artists, and they figured out how to use it. Or they have a degree that's not in their career path. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And he got them to teach the classes. Alex taught the classes. And they use their industry knowledge to pass along to students. That's the basis. Now, you're at Noman. Uh, You decide to go. Yeah, I was lucky Um, enough to get in. Yeah. Yeah, and did you have a portfolio? Because you had to send a portfolio. I mean, I had... I had what I thought was a portfolio, you know, you know, at this time I was doing graphic design as a side gig, you know, Mm -hmm. um, I had a small company called, uh, uh, monster marketing, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? And, uh, you know, it was, it was like me in this town and, you know, and there was like only two other people that were, you know, I can, I, I can humble brag about this, you know, like, I feel like, there was like three people in that town that was doing album covers, the dopest. But no, uh, yeah, it was fun because you got to you got to stretch your your legs creatively. But you know, when you're doing a, an image for a week and a half and you're getting paid fifty dollars, you're like, mm. yeah. But even you're pointing <laughs> out that you're entrepreneurial. It's it's inside of you, and everybody here is listening needs to understand. It, I get that from my grandfather for sure, mm-hmm. for sure on my mom's side. He had a he had a music store in Springfield, Illinois for the, I mean, for forever, forever. Uh, and, you know, it was it was funny to see like that that spirit jump from you know because like his his kids, you know, and my aunts and uncles, you know, like they had their own paths that they want to go on. But that entrepreneur that you, you know that that drive and that spirit literally jumped a generation. My brother's the same way. My, both my sisters were, you know, working hard and doing their own thing, make, you know, like making their own path and, and going down that, you know, entrepreneurial spirit. You know, it's, it's really interesting to see. Yeah. So it's inside. It yeah. passed on. You said it jumped a generation. Now you're in Los Angeles. You're attending Noman. It might not have jumped a generation. I don't. I don't know. I wasn't young enough to possibly maybe. Let me let me correct that just yeah. in case my family is watching and they're not. Yeah. Me. But like you know, at that time, I wasn't aware of that kind of mentality. I was like, 
when's Ninja Turtles coming on the air? You know, like yeah. that's all. I, <laughs> well, you but, know, that's all I wanted to do. And and you know, it was video game, video game, video game. I didn't really take a look at my my peers or my parents or my aunts and uncles and really get to know them in in the fact of where they wanted where the, what they wanted to do and where what they, they wanted, wanted to be. It, so, and that's so my did, fault. Yeah, I, I, it, it is difficult to find a mentor. It's very right? hard. Yeah, um, it's not taught. Mm-mm. You know, you have to search it out yourself. Uh, mentors are great. Um, I always looked for a lot of people who, who were my mentor never even realized they were my mentors because there was something essence that they had that I wanted to emulate. Yeah. And you're like, oh God, they're successful. And what are they doing to become that? And you start taking some of those and you mold them into yourself. So, well, you know, it's, it's very different because like when, when I was growing up, it wasn't about like, how do I get to be successful yeah it was more like how do i get good at that i want to be yeah. good at that you know what i mean like that was the driving force it wasn't you know how to and then you know you see you see the younger generation now where you know once again you'll be watching like gary v and you'll see these young kids you know like i'm, I'm 22 i'm starting my own youtube channel how do i yeah. monetize it and i'm like holy jeez yeah have you like you don't even know what life is go out and experience it you know what i mean like that's how you know i mean there's just so many people and and i think that even in you know and this is kind of going on a little off topic but i really think that you know we're rushed into going to college way too soon Mm -hmm. i think that you shouldn't be allowed to go to college until you're 20 i think you graduate high school you, you you either work in the workforce or you do public service jobs or something. I don't know. I totally you figure out what you want to do before you rushed into it. Cause so many people are like, I got a four year degree in this and I didn't even want it. Yeah. I totally agree with you on that. Um, in the or United it's not States, what I, it's not what I wanted to be, you it, know, or do. I, I'm going to step out and say it's taught in the United States. But, it's like in doctrine, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but talking, I have friends from around the world. I had a friend from Australia. She took a year off and toured the world, went to Japan, taught English, traveled the world, mm. met her husband, uh, then went to university afterwards. But it was, it was encouraged to go out and explore. Um, and, and I don't think it is enough today to have our youth to go out and explore and learn and experience. Grab those experiences and put them in your knapsack and carry them with you to actually, um, to build off of instead. I feel like we're on a porch right now and yelling at people to get off our lawn. Yeah, you think? (laughs) Well, anyway, let's, uh, I mean, you you did. We'll circle back. You're in Noman. Yeah. Um, You're learning. Is everything perfect? It's very hard. It's a lot hard. What's hard? Um, the, well, the, let me cut you the off first. And, and yeah. surviving in LA, you know, like I came from, you know, in Illinois, living with my brother, and you know, it, our rent was like a fraction of the cost of what it was out here, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> but, you know, dealing with that, not having, you know, I th- I think I was. While I was in Noman, I was able to get a Pell Grant thanks to their, you know, their mm-hmm. um, their services through the student services at Noman. So, you know, I got a Pell Grant to pay for most of my schooling, and I think I had like three hundred dollars left over uh, to survive. So I was living off, you know, peanut butter and jelly, mac and cheese. Yeah, and, and which just... is is not healthy. Yeah, with everybody <laughs> listening and watching, just so you know, don't do that. No, no, it's not good. <laughs> if you can avoid it, don't do that. Ramen life, you know. Uh, R- ramen life isn't good. Um, yeah. But but everybody could have been looked from the outside saying, you're living the life now. You made it to California. You're studying at one of the best schools out there. It's easy. Yeah, it looks easy. It's it's not easy. You know, the, the one of the first things that they did when, when I went there was like, you know, they bring in, you know, older students. Like that are getting ready to graduate. That are just like, yeah. hey, we learned this. Don't do this. Mm-hmm. First thing that I learned there was you don't try and ace everything. You're not gonna you're not gonna get an A in everything. 
you know, well, that's just life. and now, yeah, that's just life, you know, and I teach now yeah. I'm a teacher, which is interesting. Cause I got to, you know, I got to re I, it, it didn't happen that long ago for me. So I remember what it was like being a student and now I get to teach. So that's kind of nice. But you know, I see a lot of students struggling. Like I'm I gotta get an A's and everything. No, you don't. You got to get A's in the things you like. Yeah. And, and you know, and once again, um, when you fail, you take those experiences and that's what moves you forward and allows you to grow. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it, it's not about being perfect. It's no. about learning from those failures and using that experience to move you forward. Yeah. I mean, I, the, the, when I was going to school there, even, you know, like I, I ran out of money. I thought I was going to have enough money to cover me for at least the first year. It was gone the first five months. Yeah. It was um, gone. So it comes to, you know, I'm, I'm a year into Nomen. Yeah. I, I, I got to drop out. I can't, I can't go. You can't go. So can't get a loan. Can't <clears throat> get a loan for my age at the time. And my credit was garbage. Yep. Couldn't do it. It sucked. It broke my heart. And you're on your own. Are you getting any support from home or you a, know, little, a little, a little, you know, like, you know, moms is making sure I'm not starving. Which, which is great. Which is nice. Yeah, you know, it was nice. Open arms. That that's fantastic. Yeah. But now you're trying to struggle. Um, but for the for the most part, I was pretty much alone. I was pretty much alone out here. Yeah. Was it overwhelming? Yeah. Yeah. It still it still can be. It it's funny how, you know, I think in the last two years, like, because I've been out here for eight now, eight mm -hmm. going on nine, um, that this this L A feels like home now. L A is my home. Yeah. You know, you put your but boots it took, on. It took yeah. it took a long time to get to that yeah. way. Yeah, you, you, you've and kind of sledged through. Yeah, for like a long time, it just didn't feel like back home. Back home didn't feel like home. Out here didn't feel like home, and it yeah. was just kind of strange. Yeah, and that that's called transition. Mm. Um, honestly, wherever you move, at least takes a year. Yeah, right. It you you should almost. My belief is you should never go back home because it teases you of what you're missing. You're not settled here. And now your first year here, mm -hmm. you're like, it's not easy. <clears throat> and now you have to make another choice of, do I pack up and go home or do I, how do I stay? H yeah. How did you make that decision? It was hard. I mean, like you had to, I was like, okay, well, if I can't go to school, I don't get any grant money. Right. Yep. So how do I cover my rent now? Right. So, you know, getting ready to finish up the term, I was like, I'm, I'm going to shut that out of my brain. I'm going to focus on doing the, good, you know, fo focus on doing the work. And I really tried, you know, I, uh, I tried to the whole time that I was there, but I, I can really say that, that I think it was either four, four terms or fifth terms uh, or five terms that those last two, I was treating every, every homework assignment like a portfolio piece. And do, can I ask you, you yeah. being 31, do you think you could have made the same choices or same push at 21 if you were right out of high school or, I mean, right out of, I don't 18, think I was I mentally say. ready. I mean, like if I, if I knew these jobs existed, then maybe yes. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is coming from, you know, like I, you know, I love the movies, but past, you know, being a, you know, a, you know, like a director or a cinematographer or, you know, stuff like that. Or like, I just didn't understand what it would take to get in. There was no education in that. Right. Yeah. So once you start diving and deeping, you know, going a deep dive on figuring out what you want to do, you start to learn about these things, you know, and. You know, when you when you when I was given that skillful huntsman book, I was just like, Oh my god, you can you can draw all day all day and 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 make a living like people do this. They so, get to use their imagination all day. Yeah, That's they, what I want to do. And they're asking you to collaborate at that time. Right then and there I knew I knew that's what I wanted to do. That's and, what I And then you researched it. So now um you may stay, you may drop out, you may try to figure to stay in LA or you got to pack up and go to Illinois. What do you do? What um, happened? So, you know, at that point, you know, I was, uh, I, I was taking a creature design class with mm -hmm. Jared Moran's and, and so if anybody fantastic. wants, yeah, if anybody, 
who doesn't know Jared Morantz, he's one of the top concept designers in Hollywood right now. Um, he's designed on all the Marvel movies. Look him up. Check and him D- on his and DC. And DC. Um, he's amazing. He's yeah. one talented guy. And he's your teacher at Noman. Yeah. Yeah. One of Alex's of how I get the top industry people to give back to students. Yeah. Jared was one of your teachers. Yeah. Yeah. I was lucky enough to, to get into a class with him. And, you know, uh, it was one of those times where I was really, you know, I was really, I was like, oh my gosh, I really like doing this. This is, this is fun, you know? And I remember, I remember turning in a homework assignment and him going like, you know, like this is a best of term. And what, I was like, oh, really? That's interesting. what is best of term. So at Noman, you know, like at the end of the at the end of you know every quarter or every I think it's every every quarter, you can submit your work to become best of term, and that's one of the things where you know Noman celebrates its students, and it's a, it's a really cool. You know, I don't want to call it an internal competition because it's just like it's more like work hard and you'll you know they'll showcase your work you know and that's really great you know so I, while the the first year that I was there I was able to get like you know two or three of them which was really nice um, and that was inspiring it kept me going for sure yeah. for sure it's, it's fuel yeah it's fuel it's you're like I'm doing something right it, when when someone you know when you give you know, it's just like, you know, Kevin Smith says, it costs nothing to encourage an artist, you know, and these things encourage artists to keep going and to keep trying, collaborating with, you know, other students and stuff like that and And seeing where they're going. I loved it. I I had a, I had a very good time when I was at Noah. And is it wrong for me to say that at your age, 31, you put 150% in everything because you were like, shit oh that was it It was it for me it was yeah. just my last shot yeah. yeah so you're putting 150 that was your motivation at that time put all this energy in or otherwise i gotta go home yeah that was i yeah. mean that's another motivational like you know do i go home in defeat with yeah. every family member saying you're Told never you gonna so. make a living drawing ninja turtles for life right you know and it's like oh, well all, maybe i beg to differ but. all i can say is whatever motivates you it did, you yeah. better use that and it looks like you did yeah it did yeah so you're there you have you know you've got best of term a few times you have jared Morantz as your teacher what happened next you what was the decision you made let's well so i you know I, I had finished the class. Ed Jared's class was the last class of the term, right? And I think he could visually tell that I was bummed. So he asked me to, you know, like stay after class and talk to him about stuff. Because I had previously asked, you know, about internships and stuff like that. Um, but he was like, so what are you going to do? I heard you. I heard you can't continue. You know, and I was like, I guess... You know, and, and the, it's like right then and there, that reaction that he was giving me was, well, I'm not going home. I don't want to see that reaction from my mentor. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want that. So I'm like, well, you know, I will, uh, I'll stay, I'll find a job, you know, and I'll save up for, for classes and keep going to Noman. And he just sits there and he looks at me and he's like looking over my work and he's just like, I don't think you're going to have time. Your internship starts on Monday. What do you mean your intern st- starts on Monday? And he was like, I'm going to, you know, you're going to intern with me at, at, uh, at a design studio and that's how it's going to be. So he saw your talent and is like, you're, you're going to come I, in. I, I'll be very honest. I owe my career to, to, to Jared Morantz, definitely. Well, well, hats off to Jared. And, and Jared uh, JK, so for sure. Yeah. Um, just so you There's know, two Jareds. There are two Jareds. One's J.K. <laughs> the other one's Jared Morantz. Jared Krzyzewski. Um Once again, it's two of the best concept artists out there. Uh, oh, I, so got to, I got to sit next to both Jareds at my internship. It was and, great. And, and once again, did you just sponge? It, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that was better was, than any class. It was. I was like, well, this is my nomen now. Yeah. This is my school. And yeah. I get to sit here and do that, you know. Like, I I, I took a lot of sculpting classes, um, you know, traditional sculpting uh, with John Brown at Noman, which is, a, you know, he's a fantastic teacher and amazing. And I can't emphasize so enough that, uh, you know, the traditional ways, you got to put that 
on your tool belt. Yeah. Learning traditional and then transitioning over to the digital world is is the way to go. You, yeah. I can't emphasize that enough for everybody out there. Yeah, I mean, it, like that introduced me into the world of you know Alex Oliver, a fam- you know he's a, such an amazing uh, Brazilian you know rock star sculptor that's done some amazing work. You know, from there that led me to you know learning about you know, Rafael Grassetti. Who's, do we even have to? You know, he's really, yeah. he's really really good, really great, uh, inspiring artist, uh, good friend now, and you know it's like it's opening up the doors and, and like finding out about, you know, who's behind some of your favorite pop culture things or the things you love or the movies you love or the comics you love. You deep diving into that and figuring out like, Oh, these are really, why do I like these things? And you just become, you know, like a sponge. You just want to soak it all in, you know? So, so now let's, let me paint this picture here. Yeah. You're at a design studio. Mm-hmm. You're sitting between two of the top concept artists out there. What, what, like, what are you doing? Like every day you just, you must've woke up early and, and headed right to work because these are now your mentors Oh yeah. and, and you're sitting between it. them. Yeah. What, what, what did you do? Were, were you paid? Were you, you know, during this? No, I, I mean, it was an internship. So, I mean, like you didn't, you don't really generally get paid for internships mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And um, I think it was also around the time where they, like black the Black Swan thing. If those of you want to you know research about like the movie Black Swan and how there was a you know a couple lawsuits with interns about that you know, but you know like I don't want to deep you know I don't want to talk no. about that mm-hmm. too much. But no, at the no, same don't. time you know um, I was able to you know learn. Uh, it's a trade off. It was it was a trade off. You know I learned a lot there. Um, and, you know, before I knew it, you know, I was, I was t- getting freelance work. Right. And then, you know, you move on, you move on from that. Yeah. Um, and, you, get you know, the Jared, would, you, you know, you know, uh, Moran's was, was always, uh, you know, like, well, if you can get work on the side you can get work on the side, you know, and he even mentored me in that many, several times I've, I've the called business him. Side. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was like, I don't know what to charge. I don't know what to. And that's a big thing nowadays is like, you still don't, I, it, I mean, I have my chart, you know, my rates that I charge now, but I don't know. Well, you know, I, I think, you know, it, we, it varies we, almost all the time. And it it does. And we should, I can mention. only imagine what it's like for younger artists to get in. It's very confusing. It, it's it, very it is confusing. that that side of the business is very unknown and you know, it's something that's not taught and you know, some of these it schools are, be. yeah, some of these schools are great of teaching the art. But once again, you're a business. When you come out of school and you're using your pen or any, you know, to to get work, you are a company yourself and you need the skills to understand when you knock on someone's door and go, this is what I need to charge because I'm going to do this for you. It's learned. It's not something you just get. And once again, you have these mentors that are sharing that knowledge of Mm -hmm. how to handle it. I, I can't say that, you know, thank those guys again when you see them, buy them a beer. Um, but no, I, I do see it um, with a lot of new artists of not understanding the business side. And of, and also not understanding what you charge affects everyone else. Oh, completely. The, you, you know, know <laughs> there isn't if, you an char- inter- if you're undercutting and you're charging less, then next time you get that job, they're going to want even less. Yeah. Which then everybody, you know, and, it, and it's hard enough living in L.A. as it is, you know, let alone, oh, completely. Let alone competing in a global market at this point, which is what it is. It, right? it did in, in 2010, quickly, 2011. Right? Like just it, it global did. I, just to give a little backstory on that, um, I was monitoring it since like 2003 when Rhythm and Hughes opened a uh, studio in India. Mm-hmm. And then 2010 is when I saw it completely go global. It's, yeah. it's where the switch was turned. And it took seven years to make that jump to a global industry. Yeah. But in 2010, I saw, I was like, dude, it's not going back, dude. We've got the yeah. internet. We can send files everywhere around the world. It, it's a global industry. And, and then 2010, was that was my transition from an artist to the management side because I saw it to a global industry. And I adjusted. Once again... In this business, if you do not keep on evolving, you will fall off. Yeah. Or you will level out and become bored, and your um, inner passion could die. 
Oh, I, I, I heard that when I was at school. I would hear certain students could be like, oh, I'm just going to learn Maya and that's it. No, you're not. Yeah, you got to no, push you're yourself. Not. Something <laughs> else is going to come. You know, and you know, like right now, even there's a, there's a like a huge, huge community behind Blender. And I think it's fascinating. You know, like it's great. Open source, awesome. <laughs> you know, they made, you know, uh, parts of Spider-Verse with it. You know, that's great. You know. So, so once again, what we're trying to say is you need to keep up with the times. You need to keep on evolving and you need to keep on pushing yourself. So you finish the internship. Or, you, or you get so good that, you know, Photoshop CS2 is all you need. I know there's so many concepts there that I, I know. They're like, I'm not going to upgrade. It works fine. Yeah. It works fine. And you know what? For what they do, that's fine. You know. T totally agree. But it's definitely, um, a, it's definitely a, a hybrid market now, a 2D, 3D. For and, sure. and, and once again, emphasize that, too, is that it is with the way the industry. It's all cross-platform. Everything er, early 2000, everything was one or the other. Yeah. Uh, now, currently in 2020, it is a little bit of everything, and you need to understand. Um, how can you say it's kind of like doing a big picture? Is yeah. you have to understand how that big picture is made. You can't work down in the corner no. and not understand what else is going on. So you have to comprehend the big picture. You, ha you have to know what comes before you and what's going to come after. Because if you are better prepared to take any, like you say, another artist hands you something that you have to finish or sketch, right? Or something to the lines of, I know that I'm not going to finish this painting or this painting might be alterations or do different versions of it but it might not be me and that you might have to hand that off to another artist it's like making sure you know and these are things that you know i learned while i was at noma and i didn't even realize you know you name your layers you know make it nice and neat you're not the please, only one that's going to touch this file, yeah yeah let's know, emphasize and, uh, uh d please keep everything organized yeah. and name everything properly all and, of these movies all these games are a group you know it's a it's, it's a, a team effort. effort team it effort. cannot be done alone. It is not one person. It is a team effort from top to bottom. Not saying that there aren't rock stars because there's definitely rock stars. Oh, there's always but, rock stars. you know, they're <clears throat> still making sure the team works well. You know. so, so let's look at it. You've interned. Yep. You start getting, you know, business on your own. Um, I freelance you, for like three years. You freelance. Yeah. And then you go start your own company. Yeah, I do. I, I missed hanging out with other artists because I felt like... That was the time where I grew the most, you know, where ideas could get bounced off of each other and uh, you could share assets and, and, and just make make stuff, right? Yeah. I think everybody wants to just make things, you know, like what drew me to doing art as a career was like, you know, like, oh, I, I don't, it's, I'm not going to the, the, you know, and doing the same thing every day. You know, I worked in customer service at, you know, at one point, uh, you know, in Illinois and every phone call, it, it, you know, nobody calls you and says, hey, you're doing a good job. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a problem after a problem after a problem. And no one's happy to call you. No one ever wants to call tech support or stuff like that, you know. So it really got to me. It was just like, man, you know, every phone call is a negative one. Like, this sucks. I don't like it. Well, let's dabbling on that a little yeah. bit um once again when you're conceptualizing yeah you're conceptualizing for somebody else you're yeah. creating artwork and we've got to emphasize once again it's a job right and people forget yes it's artwork but you're still getting paid to do artwork for somebody else and they're going to have their opinion yeah so you have it's to a hard thing to get over it, it is it when is. somebody turns around i've been in enough meetings out there where we're sitting around and a director sits down and goes i don't like that and it isn't a reflection on the artist it no. just doesn't fit his vision and he's being passionate about his project but sometimes I've seen artists get offended. You got to be able hurt. to kill your babies. Yeah, because it may be an amazing and beautiful piece of artwork. Mm -hmm. It doesn't fit that director or writer's film. Yeah. So it gets thrown out. It's not a reflection of the artist. It just didn't fit. And it's not personal. It's not personal. Yeah. So that, that's the biggest thing. It's not personal. 
and personally, and I'll even go out on a thing, your artwork is done at home after hours. That's yeah. your passion. Currently, you're getting paid to use your talents to design and create because you are talented for somebody else, and it's a job. It, you always have to do what the client's asking for. Yes. You, you, can, you, you can do your version later. But you always have to, yeah. You know. Yeah, we can't emphasize that enough. Um, I've been in enough meetings with enough directors. Um, is, we'll, have, we'll have to get some people that design the Predator in here yeah. to talk about that. that yeah, experience. yeah, definitely. Because yeah. it just thick skin. Um, Got to do it. You're and, at a job. And, and as an artist, we don't have thick skin. No, nah, you're passionate. You're yeah, passionate, man. Yeah. I mean, that's what allows your artwork to come through is because you're passionate, but then it makes you a little thin skin for that. And well, it's you get fine. attached. You get attached to your yeah. artwork, and you, and and that's a hard thing to do, you know. And I I struggle with it all the time. I'll be on a film, and I'll just be like, mm, I don't I, like this decision that was made. But you just gotta shut up. You gotta. You do shut it. up. And how many yeah. times I've had to go over? I've gotten the notes from a client, yeah. from a director, and I walk over and go. Hey, it's nothing personal. It wasn't. It yeah. it wasn't what they wanted. Yeah. Um, they like this aspect of it. Once again, I learned. <clears throat> I always start with the positive of what they liked, and then go what they didn't like, and you need to change it. Um, that's just you know, and that's another thing that I don't think is taught enough in art schools is how to critique. Uh, good point. You know, very good. Be, point. Being negative in a critique solves nothing. Oh, it does. You can be truthful. Yes. And have manners. You know what I mean? Like yeah. everyone's working hard. It's called a compliment sandwich. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you say, I like it because of this. This is the thing I have a problem with, but you also did this really well. No one ever really gets mad at that. Right. You know, and completely, and you know, I, I even see it in the community today. Like people are having problems with critiquing and you know, we, you know, when we were doing 10,000 hours, you know, at one point I was like, you know, no memes. A meme is not a critique. I'm sorry. No. No one will ever change my mind of that. You know, if I if I had Ian McKaig in here and he, you know, he drew something and he was like, well, what do you think, Justin? And I just slapped like a, an animated smiley face on it. He's going to be like, what the hell's wrong with you? Yeah. You know, <laughs> my, my, so that's what I was, you know, when, when I made that rule in the forums and stuff like that, I, and then trying to implement it, you know, it was one of those things where I'm trying to help you guys, but you're not seeing it because you want, you want the mm -hmm. funny, you want the, you know, the funny comment to get the likes. And if, if that's what you're worried about in a art community, that's trying to make you better. You're taking them away the wrong lessons. Yeah, yeah, one of my favorite notes I ever got early on was I was fixing something in flame, uh, and the client came in and said, "Can I get a little oomph and a little uh and a little uh?" <laughs> and I asked them, "Can you if increase you, that by thirty percent? What does that yeah, mean?" Yeah, I, I had no clue, and I said, "If <laughs> I knew what that was, I looked at them straight in the face. If I said if I could put that into the computer, I'd be a magician. Yeah. Uh, I need more dialogue. I need." something feasible that I can comprehend to actually do. That is, I looked at them straight in the face and it could have been cause I was naive. I was like, that's not a note and I cannot do that. But when they stood in front of me, oomph, uh, that, and I was like, I have no clue what that is. Crit critiquing makes you better. Yes. You learn from it and you get to the finish line faster. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So, <clears throat> you know, we're, we're just about, you know, we're getting to an hour. Yeah. Um, so your, oh, you, so I started, I started you started, started a company. A company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, now you're at, you start another company called Sanctum Studios. Yeah. Uh, you have some of the best concept artists out there. Uh, your team is deep from environment artists to character designers. Um, to 3D modeling. 3D to asset modeling. Asset generation. Yeah. 3D printing. <clears throat> yeah. And, and I just want to emphasize... You know, what he related to me is his company is focusing on the art and the artist. Yeah. Um, he wants to get as, it grounded As cheesy again. as it sounds, it's an art studio for artists by artists. You know? Yeah, we, we can't <laughs> emphasize that enough. Sorry, FUBU. I totally just do. stole that. That's right. But it is so important to realize that um, you're taking your roots and you kind of want to celebrate it and put the art back in art. 
Yeah, you know, I mean, I when I so I started a company called Ironclad Studios, yep. you know, um, and you know that was around for five, six years, five, five years. I don't know, I can't remember. Um, but I got myself into a, a situation where I was doing more management than I was art, and essentially, I, f- I f- you follow your gut, you follow your passion. Yep. So I leave there, you know. Um, not happy with certain things but you know that's not that's not you know neither here nor there that's one of those I things wasn't called happy life is slapping you upside the head again life was yeah so i i decided to make a change and you know i left and you know the idea to do another company after that one wasn't right away it wasn't right away i was seriously considering going to work for you know companies trying to get you know a little more stability in my life. Um, yeah, you know, uh, it, it was just, it was just one of those things, you know, and I, you know, at this time I'm teaching for art center. I'm teaching for schoolism, you know, with Bobby Chu, um, and Kay and all those, it's a great platform as well. And, you know, I just, kind of like you know I, I found a group of people that wanted to do the same thing it was kind of like it was it's kind of like ironclad 2.0 you totally, know totally makes sense you know i i took what i learned from ironclad and you know through new, no fault of my own it was just like kind of you know i i think there was a bunch of people in the room and i was just like we were all chatting about art techniques and stuff like that and um I think it was right after Lightbox. I think, yeah, it was right after Lightbox, and I was just like, I want to, I want to try one more time. I want to see what, I want to see what this takes me. With the knowledge that I have now, with what I learned on what to do and what not to do, let's try this one more time. And that's you came and up with Sanctum, Sanctum Studios. Yeah. Well, you know, once again, kudos to you. Hats off. Um, you followed your passion. Uh, you stuck to it. Mm-hmm. Um, once a, I can't emphasize enough is, you, you know, you expressing how you broke down those walls and then found motivation to keep on moving forward at every single wall or door that closed. You sharing that story um, is just inspirational. Um, I hope all the artists understand it and they take something from that, that it always isn't going to be easy. And, and, you, and it, the journey is different for everybody. It is. It really is. You know, a, a lot of the things that I see online are, you know, a lot of, you know, it worked out great. No one ever talks about the hard stuff that you go through, the loneliness or imposter syndrome. I still have imposter syndrome. Um, that's a rampant, you know, thing in our community is, you know, imposter syndrome or I'm not good enough or we're going to have to explain what yeah. imposter syndrome is. We'll do a whole is. show. We'll do a whole syndrome. show on that. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely, you know, I, I think what we, and I think we, we, you know, we were talking about that earlier, what we want to do with this show and this podcast is something along the lines of bringing people in, hearing their stories hearing how they got to where they are and what they're doing now, you know, and, and in the middle talking about, you know, relatable topics, you know, like, you know, and, but then there's other, other things that we want to do. We want to bring in, you know, entertainment lawyers and, and, you know, uh, physical therapists to talk about, you know, Oh, you're sitting at a desk all day. Here's some of the exercises that you can do to fight carpal tunnel or, you know, if your aches and joints and stuff like that. We really, really want to try and bring more positive information um, and stories, real stories, of people that follow their passion and they're doing the jobs they love. Yeah, and we hope you take even just the smallest thing from this podcast. Um, wrapping this up, I want to thank Justin Gobi Fields. I'm Michael Pecchia. Our next guest for our next podcast is... Sean Faden, the VFX supervisor from From Mulan. Mulan. Uh, We're super excited. Thank you guys all for tuning in. Justin, thank you. Uh, For the next one, Justin and I will be on the other side co-hosting. We wanted to roll this one out 
to really let you guys understand and show what was behind 10K hours. And that is Justin JGF, Justin Goby <laughs> Fields. Uh, thank you guys all, and we'll catch you next podcast. Peace.